This is uh, J.D. Marston, who's visiting at the ashram in Crestone, Colorado, the Babaji ashram. And uh, Babaji gave him the name Ramdas, and he met Babaji in 1981 and lived there in Harakon for seven years. And I've asked him to tell a little bit about when he first met Babaji. J.D.? Well... When I first met Babaji, it was in the riverbed, <clears throat> and he was wearing aviation sunglasses and a big flappy hat, <clears throat> and uh, it was after lunch, and he very kindly told somebody to get me some food and give me a room, but I wasn't so sure that this was Babaji, because I kind of expected him to look a little bit different. Um, <laughs> he looked rather unusual in that moment. Anyway, uh, I arrived and got rested, and the next morning I was sitting with a group of people outside his room, and he was walking around and walking around and doing different things with people, just being kind of quiet. And I had my brand new white suit of clothes on, uh, white kurta and white pajamas, and I was feeling very different. And after a couple of minutes, Babaji came over and stood next to me. And he started swishing me with his lungi. And I had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> and immediately went into confusion about what was going on. And uh, later, I would come to understand that he was giving me what is called jara, which is a kind of healing with a sweeping motion using peacock feathers. But in this case, he was using his lungi and kept swishing me back and forth and back and forth. And he leans over and he looks at me and he says, What is your name, Mr.? And I said, Derek. And he looks at me, and he said, New name, Derricotta. And that was like, what? And all of a sudden, I was just amazed that he had made a play on words in English and was giving me a message, be like Terracotta be malleable, be like clay. And so that got my attention and I was starting to feel a little bit um, confused and a little bit um, uh, vulnerable and exposed. So he kept walking around and gradually he made his way to the uh, side of another room. And in that moment, uh, when he was going to disappear around the room, he turned and I had this thought in my mind, I wonder if this Babaji gives Shaktipad. And <clears throat> that had been an experience I'd received in the United States from uh, other gurus or teachers, which had been a pretty potent experience for me. And uh, so, I had never really uh, experienced being 
with someone who knew what you were thinking even before you thought it. So as Babaji <clears throat> turned and looked back at me, he gave me this look and I felt like somebody had picked up a basketball and thrown it at me and hit me right between the eyes and my head flew back. And I just went into some state that I'd never experienced before. Uh, I do recall crying for about three days. And I do recall having the sensation that when this force that he sent to me uh, hit me, that it was as if he'd opened up a faucet and just let out one drop. And that if he'd opened the faucet a little bit more, probably would have killed me. That's how powerful it was. So that was the first moment that Babaji showed me without making a big fuss, which he very often did, um, doing things very quietly, maybe with no one else around or a whole bunch of people around, that would show you where he was at and where you were at. And uh, no fanfare, no big deal, it just happened, boom, like that. Bole Baba Ki Jai. Jay. So it's interesting, I hadn't heard that part of the story about when Babaji was giving you Jara with his lungi, and I wonder if it was a precursor or uh, that he was going to give you that uh, those mantras or you were going to learn the Jara um, healing. And I have heard one particular story when you were doing Jara for a very long time um, when you were traveling with Babaji and some very interesting thing occurred. Do you remember that? And I think Sundar Singh was involved in this story. Yes, Sundar Singh and also um, Udang Katori, uh, the Italian woman. So can you tell us a little bit about the Jara and, and how you got it and this story? Um, prior to coming to Harakan, I'd been involved in uh, oriental medicine and hadn't really been doing very much with it in Harakan, occasionally giving people some treatments. And one day he uh, was having his bath by the river and it was late and it was night and he looked up at the sky and all the stars and he breathed in and when he breathed out this long series of mantras came out and unfortunately uh, my memory wasn't so good and uh, I couldn't remember what he had said. So the next day I brought a paper and pencil and asked Babaji if he would kindly repeat it again and he did. And he then told me to do Jara, which is the sweeping with peacock feathers. Sweeping the aura of someone, is this correct? Well, or, their, lightly, or their person? You're lightly touching the body, but it's not as if you're giving somebody a bath and scrubbing them. It's just very, very light, very gentle. So time passed, and uh, I got pretty sick. I had typhoid, and 
Babaji was going to Wapiti and he told me to come. And I really didn't feel like going. I was in pretty bad shape. He made me go, travel to Wapi to the west coast of India. And as soon as we arrived, we were, he was walking to the temple to his asana, and we passed the building and he pointed to a room and said, you there, Jara. So anyway, he arrives, sits on his asana, there's hundreds and hundreds of people around, and one of the first thing he did was to point at me and said, anybody who's sick, go see this guy, he'll cure you. I started feeling rather uncomfortable at that point. And um, anyhow, I went to the room and lo and behold, there was a line, it was in the hundreds waiting. And I looked at that and I said, oh my God, <laughs> how am I ever going to deal with this? So I sat down, and I had the mantra that he had given me, and I just started. And as soon as one person was finished, another would come. And this went on for days and days and days. And pretty soon, it, the experience was the mantra was saying itself and it was moving this body. And that was about all that I can remember of what happened in that room. And then I think after, it was at least after a week, maybe eight or nine days, S uh, Sundar Singh came to the door, knocked on the door, opened the door, and there was somebody in the room and giving Jara. And uh, Sundar Singh said, Babaji wants to see you. And I remember saying, okay, as soon as I finish with this person. And about a minute later, finished the Jara, got up, opened the door, and as I stepped across the threshold of the door, the right foot was in the room and the left foot was stepping across the threshold. But where the foot landed was not in the dirt outside the room, but rather landing in the temple in front of Babaji and going into Pranam. That is all I was aware of. And Babaji sit, sitting on his asan kind of straightens up a little bit and looks down at me and smiles and he says, Tifa, everything okay? And I had this funny feeling in my face and this buzzing in my ears and I felt like I was made out of rubber and just this wrong, wrong, wrong going on. And I said, yes, Babaji. And then he pointed to a man sitting in the crowd of people having darshan and said, give this man jara. I said, yes, Babaji. I walked back out of the temple stopped with the men and said, please, sir, come with me. We were walking out of the temple. We reached the path leading from the temple back to the room where I was. And uh, this Italian woman, Uran Kratori, comes running out 
and going, incredible, incredible. And I said, what, what? And she started saying something and I was buzzing in the head. Meanwhile, Sundar Singh, who had been waiting for me to come out of the room, comes running back up the path, sees me with this man, and said, actually, I looked at him and he turned white, completely white. And he said, Ooh, what happened? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, have you been to see Baba? And I said, yeah, I'm going to give this guy Jara. And he looks at me and he said, because I waited for you outside the room and you never came out. Meanwhile, Udan Katari is incredible, incredible. I saw you flying <laughs> across the grounds and into the temple and Pranami. And I had no idea what happened at all. All I knew is this mantra was going and I felt like rubber and I heard this wah, wah, wah. And there are these two people jumping up and down in front of me. So, at that point, I'm figuring, there's something funny going on here. <laughs> but I really had no idea what it was. I went back to the room with the man and gave him Jara. And I believe that was towards the end of the day. And... During the evening of that day, I think it was the last day of the Navratri, and we were all going to be leaving the next day. So during that evening, I started feeling funny and not well, and just had to keep going. We all piled in these cars to drive back to Harakan, and I was in the car behind Babaji and was with some Indian people and all of a sudden I felt really bad and I made them stop the car and I ran into the bushes and got extremely sick. And I don't remember much about that trip except that when we finally reached uh, the dam site uh, and it had been raining or something, and we had to take an alternative route walking up the side of the mountain, um, the opposite side of the river from the temple. Babaji took a look at me, and he reached over and he grabbed me by the wrist, and he marched me from the dam site all the way up to Harakan. And when we arrived, there was the usual excitement, and Babaji jumped up onto the bench uh, in front of the, on the terrace in front of the ashram and sat down. And Gaurav Devi, who was there, took one look at me and said, Oh, you've got hepatitis. And Babaji said, What? And she explained to him in Hindi about hepatitis. And he says, you, go, stay in your room. Two weeks, don't come out. And that's what happened. Bali Baba Ki Jai. Jai. Finally, um, can you share... Um, you shared once a story I heard about when Babaji was leaving his body and how you were questioning why he was doing all this dramatic thing as if he was so sick when you knew he was God. Can you tell that instance when you accompanied him to the, to the bathroom? I believe it was the evening before he, he uh, left his body.
there was a very different feeling in the air. Um, a great deal of feeling of uncertainty. People were worried. People were concerned. Um, nobody quite knew what was happening, except a few people. Um, Babaji had predicted the time of his passing 14 years earlier, but most people didn't know about that. And he was experiencing a lot of pain. And he, he said a number of different things, one of which was that he was leaving because of me and mine. So all of a sudden he needed to go into the bathroom and I helped him walk to the bathroom from his room and he was moaning and groaning and making all kinds of sounds and we went into the bathroom and he needed to wash his hands and his face and it was a normal type sink with faucets or one faucet and next to it was a copper lota. So even though Babaji could reach over and turn the water on himself, it was my duty to turn on the water and fill the copper lota. And then he, I would pour the water on his hands and he would wash. But the area was small, and for us to accomplish this, we had to stand next to each other, touching each other. And I could feel this incredible uh, energy going on. And all of this in sound that he was producing, um, was um, really upsetting. I felt um, hopeless, helpless to do anything. And in my mind, I was thinking, Babaji, why are you doing this? You, you can just heal yourself whenever you want. You, you don't have to be doing all of this, so why are you doing this? And I felt a brush into my body and kind of rubbed me a little bit with his shoulder. And I heard him say, you live like this, and the this was um, kind of a vision, if you will, of a modern lifestyle. And then he said, and you die like this and rubbing the, the presence of that into the body. And then I was just confused. I still didn't understand why he was doing this. And all of a sudden, he stops moaning and groaning. There's total silence. And he turns to me and he winks. And it was all an act. And I 
I became so overwhelmed. I, I wasn't able to think. I wasn't able to do anything. And I forgot about pouring the water on his hands. And this all happened in a matter of a few seconds. So I had stopped pouring the water and he was, pour the water, pour the water, pour the water. Don't stop. Oli Baba Kijay. Jay.